It's always a joy when the coach of the Collingwood Footy Club joins us. I don't know whether we're going to claim something regarding your success and the success being enjoyed. We have no right to, and it's got nothing to do with us, but we're on a little ride with you, and it's ridiculous how much we find ourselves Barracking for your footy club in these close finishes, knowing that we're going to be speaking. I find that really hard to believe. <laughs> oh, and it's, mate, I'm telling you, I can't mouth. believe it's coming out of my mouth either. But, yeah. but it's true. You've done it again. You found another way. Yeah, yeah. No, we're we're, we're finding ways to win, whether we're, whether we're behind or in front. And yeah, wouldn't be too many Collingwood supporters turn the TV off at three quarters. <laughs> no <laughs> chance. No one does. If Collingwood's in another thriller, you turn it up. Did you mention Pendlebury at all? Like in at quarter half or three quarter time? Did you use that? Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. before the game and, and all, all week, to be honest. But then uh, you were talking about honouring Pendles because we've been talking about honouring the jumper all year. But then the guy that's worn it the most in the history of our game, we, we, we referred to that. But then at three-quarter time, I did get him out front and say, hey, this is the time to honour him the most. Yeah. yeah right now is the time. Yeah. So, so we did refer to that, yeah. Well, what's – I'm not going to – none of us in footy will hold you to this, right? But just as we sit here on the – what is it? The 21st of July, 2022. He's played 350. How long do you reckon he can go for? Just it, we, it, barring injury, but some calamitous body issue letting him down. H- how long? I was asked this um, on last Thursday, leading into the game, and I, I didn't want to touch it because yeah. I thought, oh, no, let's just live in the moment and, and appreciate what Pendles has done to the to this time. And look, the way he prepares himself, I would have thought he's got at least another season in him yep. um, with his contract. So hopefully, he has. Yeah. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I, I, I don't know, but I, I think that um, his preparation is as good as anyone I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. With with the close games, the results have been the same. You've been winning by small margins. Have they been? Have any of the games been different? Have you won them in different ways? Have you seen elements of the game you thought, well, "Gee, that's good." We we got the same result, three, four, five point margin, but we won it in a different way. Yeah, we have, and, and nice to meet you too, Josh. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Yeah, you're looking a little bit different, Gazy. He's but, big. Uh, they're yeah, both he's, big. Yeah, the big yeah. guy. He's a big guy. Shook yeah. his hand before. I thought that's a big hand. <laughs> I wonder who took so many marks. Oh, yeah. No, I, 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 we have, we have, and. and I suppose the, the close margins are one thing, but every game we've played's had rain, some form of rain attached to it, whether it's a full game in Frio or half moments in, in, in some games. So it's kept the, the game a bit closer than what potentially wouldn't be if it was dry. Um, but yeah, there has been a different different versions of the way we've won, with, you know, coming from behind a little bit against Geelong, uh, against um, the Gold Coast and you know having to really fight, dig deep last week. We were eight, 16 points down in the third quarter and fight back and then hold on and yeah, we're 37 points up against the Giants and then couldn't hold on in the rain. Look, there's just a whole different array of, of, of games. Every ga- every game's different in, in some form. You spent half your life travelling as a player. This this kind of – Collingwood has this reputation for being a, a great travelling team. Um, that's something about it. And I haven't got the numbers in front of me, but I'm sure the numbers back that up. In the short time that you've been at the footy club, have you – is there something about the way that – group travels together? Is there something particularly about the way they galvanise when they get away or do you see something that's um, a bit common to this footy club? There's a couple of little things that I think I'm really enjoying the travel. I think you have a better winning percentage when you travel only five times a year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that that yeah, helps. Yeah, you know, yeah. In, in Brisbane days and, and even last year at Hawthorne, Hawthorne travelled you know, as much as any interstate team mm. with the games in Tassie. Yeah. Uh, but I'm really enjoying um, families going on the, on the away trips. That's something that probably in my Brisbane Dames days I wouldn't have thought was common. But yeah, you know, having partners and, and kids present and family members. I know after the game, the Pendles game on the weekend, we had 100 people and after the game. And it was, yeah, I, I really like it. It's like a country footy club. I, yeah. I love that. And we're trying to create that. It's something that's not manufactured. It's been somewhat deliberate. Um, yeah, we're enjoying that. Have, you, have yeah. you had to, as a coach, have you had to uh, a little – a little uh, child running through a meeting room or, uh, you know, Tommy thought, oh, geez, I wouldn't mind this being a little bit more, you know, insular and professional. Have you had to worry about those sorts of things or you just embrace that what you get from an energy perspective is, is yeah. more important? Yeah, more, more embracing. I, I, you know, we've had many times where there have been kids in the meeting room <laughs> as captains running going, no worries, you're part of the meeting, here we go. <laughs> um, no, but, I, look, I, I'm, I'm fully embraced that, that part of it. I think we want to be a – yeah, that's the club we want to be. Um, you know, almost selling meat trays at the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, again, I think that's it's it's something that's changed. I think it's evolved, and you know, I, I learned good lessons when we went to Brisbane on Easter Thursday and played the, the Lions up there. And and I, I, my partner and and little girl stayed with my father in Queensland, and whereas everyone else was staying at the hotel, and I walked in and said, "Hang on, we got work to do. We need to win." Yeah, yeah. Um, but then within twenty four hours, I thought, "No, nah, this is the yeah. way of the future. This yeah. is a good feel. Like, you know, you feel like you're at home and." 
So, yeah, I think I, I really embrace that. So you've been speaking about this from day one since you've been coming in here and, you know, that sort of search for the right work-life balance and getting all of that right. So that's part of it, I reckon. What you're talking about there is whatever gets the individuals happy est. you know, happy people are going to perform to their you know, optimum more often, I, I imagine. What are we? Uh, 18 weeks into the season, 19, round 19 coming up. That search for work-life, we've touched on it a couple of times with you through, but is your staff, are the people that you're working with mostly, are you seeing that you've got that balance this deep into the season um, close to where you want it to be? Uh, ne- never never something handled, always trying to you know, be better or manage it. Yeah, you know, Brendan Bolton did say, me, say to me a few weeks ago, he thought it was the best balance he's had in a long time in footy, and yeah, we're conscious of it. I think post the Kangaroos game, we felt the group needed an extra day off. We right. the, the whole footy club had an extra day off because, you know, whether it's the travel and the tiredness and whatever that comes with this time of the year, yeah, we're, we're con- constantly monitoring that. Um, if anything, I think lessons learned, you know, been in this game for a long time, less is more this time of year, I feel. Mm. Yeah, right. Um, you know, trying to find energy in. Yeah. I don't know, do you, do you feel this, Josh? Yeah, no, I agree. You, well, the monotony sets in, doesn't it? The, the finals are... Still far enough away that the excitement's not quite there, and you haven't done the job, and the monotony sets in of the same meetings. Are you trying to, you know, run a meeting in a different way? Now you've got the COVID stuff to deal with and yeah. and separate things. Are you trying to do anything in a different way? You, know, you might do your your, your two day uh, run post game offside, or you might do a captain's run in a different manner. You try to. Do you need to go down those paths? I mean, each playing group's a little bit different. They've got their own personality with that. Yeah, I'm conscious of every review sort of have similar attachments to it. Yeah, but then, you know, obviously what you're saying is, is important to keep the freshness in the group. Um, I, I've said this before, I'd love you to come to our Monday review. You wouldn't know if we won or lost. Yeah, That's yeah, always yeah. been our yeah. mentality. We're getting back to work. We're trying to improve. We're trying to be winners every day. So that that hasn't changed. But finding, you know, the old analogy, the sausages in the end of the day, yeah. you're just trying to cook them a different way. We're, <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. We've had a few curry sausages lately. <laughs> 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 so is that all a bit counterintuitive? I mean, here we are, we're getting to the, you know, you're five weeks out and you're right in the mix. You're in the mix and, you know, there's all sorts of possibilities in front of your footy club as there are in front of other footy clubs. And yet you say you kind of want to kind of preserve a bit of energy and not overcook them at this time of the year. Is there a bit of you that thinks, no, no, now's the time we've got to put our foot down where it's getting every game is a bit more serious now than the one before. You still want to be fresh when you get to September, and you're going to be part of it now. What that looks like, we're not sure. But um, do you fight the instinct to work harder at this time of the year, knowing what you know? Uh, well, we have deliberately been training harder. Right. We, we've, we've looked at the schedule, and you know, seven, eight day breaks has been our story for probably four or five, six weeks, and and we have trained them harder. We've had two main sessions, and deliberately putting a lot of K's in our legs, and whether that's been a cost at times in game potentially looking at certain uh, indicators it has been within moments, but we've been very deliberate because we've got some six-day breaks coming up where we know we're not going to be out of a train. Okay, yeah, and yeah, this, yeah. Is, yep. this is something very, very measured. You know, Jared Wade, I've mentioned his name before, does an amazing job around this stuff. But I, I agree with what I heard Chris Scott say, I think it was only yesterday, that the team that gets it right the next four or five, six weeks is the team that ultimately probably wins this thing. Yep. And and you have to improve. If, if, you, if you're not finding some form of improvement, whether it's individual improvement or a group, you tend to sort of stay the same and maybe not quite get the job done when it counts. But I, I think we need to find some form of improvement between now and the end of the season. And I presume when you were playing and, and the, the Lions, you know, Lee Matthews, well, we're going to train harder, there wasn't a lot of communication. You just had to do it, do what you were told. <laughs> but now I imagine you probably, you know, you map it out with the leadership group, or you you know you you get the communication around that this is what we're going to do, this is why we're going to do it because the players want to know what we're doing, why we're actually going to do it. So before they even go out and 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 implement it for you, yeah, yeah. I did look at the communication across the whole board. Like, why are we doing this? I think younger generation yeah. want to know everything. <laughs> yeah. know. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing more? But I think consistency in terms of our message has been really important, exactly for that reason. And the players want to know, and you want them yeah. to buy in, and. Yeah, uh, you want to believe the reason behind whatever it is, right? Yeah, I think there was one. It might have been the North game. And Pendles sort of come up to me after. I thought, geez, I felt the group might have been a bit heavy, and so I couldn't put a finger on it. But I said, well, the, the deliberate load in that week was was high for a reason. Mm. And yeah, you know, whether we get it right every time, we're, we're not perfect. We're yeah, far from yeah. that. But we're learning good lessons about our group and what it needs. How much time do you spend um, 
in specific meetings with your leadership group? Is that is that is that a you lock it in? It's a Wednesday morning, or a, is that something you've got in your weekly kind of diary? Yeah, it is. It's Monday, 12, 12 to one. We we meet just after the match committee. We we meet for a couple of hours prior to that, and then um, we just bring a, a, couple, a different coach in every week to hear the messaging. And yeah, it, I think it's. We're very, I'm very lucky to walk into an environment where you've got a guy playing 350 games <laughs> and a captain, yeah. and then there's you know, there's others attached to that. So I'm um, Graham Wright included is yeah. part of that. So yeah. I'm very lucky to have that. Now uh, he may or may not be back, but the big boy Brody Grundy is he is he is he fit for selection? Is he ready to rock and roll in terms of playing a game? There's no VFL for you guys this week, which can always be frustrating. You've got guys getting disjointed preparations, but is he ready to rock and roll? Well, he's available to play, and I, I had a really good conversation with Brody yesterday. We just don't think he's quite physically ready to play AFL footy. Um, he's missed 14, 15 weeks. Mm. That's a long time out of the game. So we're, we look, we're very deliberate again in terms of what that looks like. I've, I've always been, and I said this to him yesterday, he knows me for a long time ago. One of my philosophies in, in coaching is setting people up to be successful. Yeah, yeah. How, how are we setting this person up to be successful, or the team, whatever it looks like? And I said to him yesterday, I want to set you up, or we want to set you up, so when you play AFL footy, there's no, you know, need two or three yeah. you know, runs yeah. to get yourself going. We want to have you firing. Because um, talk about improvement. He's one guy that can really help us spark towards yeah. the end of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we made a promise with you at the start of the year and to ourselves that we're going to talk broad footy with you and not necessarily talk specifically about Collingwood and oh, Focus. Sorry. How, how, how no, 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 no. Where's, where's no, it's been a really, it's actually been really hard to do it because... The, well, you could have told me that before no, no, you came no, in. No, but it's a weekly oh. uh, challenge we have because the footy team has been a compelling story this year and, and as he's got... Uh, as he's grunting, I'm not going to ask you about the future, right? What do you, what you do in terms of you know managing him and where his future lies. But it, I'll ask you this question and you can answer it if you want. There's this kind of belief with Grundy that he's... A bit of take it or leave it with his footy, pretty cruisy, doesn't, you know, there's other things in his life. And since he signed the long contract, um, yeah, one or two things have, have prevented him from being the player he was. I reckon if he's listening to all of this sort of stuff and he is a competitor, I would think that Brody Grunnies can't wait to start playing again mm. to show some people, hey, hey, hey. I was all Australian. I was the people. So I was better than Max Gorn two and a half years ago. Do you sense in him that he wants to prove a few people wrong, and he wants desperately to get back to where he was? Yeah, I, I look. I again, I know, knowing Brody and you watch him, he's such a meticulous preparer. Like he, he's as good a preparer as you're going to get. You, you, you you'd have to. Um, you get your young players in. You go, okay. Just watch how Brody prepares himself. You yeah, know, he, he's he's gonna he's gonna set himself up in that regard. I, I think he's. I guarantee Brody's not listening. No, I was gonna say. I know him well. He's not listening. Not a consumer this, of this, any this, of this, 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 stuff. This, no, no, this won't cross his desk. But but I but I, I hope to think that Brody's gonna put on the jumper. Well, I, I know he put on the jumper, the Collingwood jumper, and you'll see a determined guy to make us better. I'm so certain yeah. that he's gonna make us better. Like early early statistics in our centre bounces, for example, we were in the top three or four in the competition. Uh, we, that, that was rounds one to five. We're now eighteenth. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I know he makes a significant difference in that one part of our game that can make a big difference to us yeah. going forward. Who was that at Brisbane in your playing days? Who was the guy that you was the most meticulous preparer in that footy team? Does one jump out at you? I think we're very lucky. We had we had many. Yeah, we had many. I I, I think there's probably. A list of ten to twelve. Can I throw one at you? Who Sean I was ridiculous. Can I work? Who was that? Throw one Sean at you. Sean Hart. Yeah, of course. But I yeah. st- is still a little bit like this. Counts his calories. Nigel Lappin. Oh, Nigel Lappin. Yeah, drives me insane. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's one of the fittest guys you'll see right now. Like, yes, he's embarrassing. <laughs> Just to, to, to chat to, I feel. I feel oh yeah, because you've really let yourself go. <laughs> yeah, I let myself go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, would, the day he did his fitness test before the whatever I threw, whatever grand final it was, how were you aware of what was going on? Because he was doing that out on the ground, and you bikes were downstairs. Were you aware of what he was carrying into that game, and and how touch and go it was for him? So, somewhat. Yeah, the stories come out post the game. Yeah, that he had to go through to prepare himself. To play and and then you know the injury he carried throughout like they're all folklore now yeah yeah like yeah, yeah and and I've I've said this before there's one thing to play injured but to play well injured that's yeah. a whole different level isn't it uh, you know we're we're lucky to have Brody Mycheck did that this year yeah you, know, you admire those guys who can can face adversity and then really uh, perform really well yeah it. yeah actually just on Sean Hart he just a, a story for him he used to pl- he used to in his off season run marathons or do training with Steve Montegetti. <laughs> like just, can you imagine just for fun, that? Just for imagine fun. what your sports bikes would say, your so- yeah. sports science bikes would say yeah. 
nowadays if one of your bike if Johnny if if Johnny Noble said I'm going to go run a, I'm going to run the Gold Coast Marathon and the Melbourne Marathon yeah. in my time off. What yeah, do you reckon? He would run 15 k's to training. Yeah, just, yeah. Just to get, wow. Yeah, like he's yeah. There's many of those type of stories. I'm sure. Uh, footy clubs are diverse uh, beasts these days, and you're at a footy club that's as diverse as any. With you know the women's programs, netball and footy attached, and you know it's a, it's an amazing it's an amazing community community entity, the Collingwood Footy Club. Ten year anniversary of the Magpie Net program, which yeah. I know the club's particularly proud of and committed to. Uh, what do you what do you know about this and how important are these um, uh, additions to footy clubs? Yeah, I think it's huge. I, I think like Brendan Noddle does an amazing job with the Salvation Army and Collingwood, Collingwood would have been attached to it for a long time. Um, yeah, I think there's ten ten year anniversary yep. this uh, today or, or this week I yep. think it could be yep. and, I know Coles. Every goal we kick, they they donate a thousand dollars to to this nest and and support of of the homeless around uh, Melbourne in particular. And um, I think with five hundred meals a day they provide yep. for, for this. Yeah, right. Yep. For these people. And yep. you just picture at the moment how lucky we are to go home into your to your own house with yeah. heating and, yeah. and yep. cooling yep. and all these things that we're lucky to have. And you know, you take those things for granted. So you know, Brendan Noddle and his crew, we, we're we're really uh, appreciative for the work they do. And I, I know this sort of stuff goes back. I don't know how far it goes back at Collingwood, and I know other clubs do it as well. But I know Paul Lecuria was, you know, really committed. And he took other players along with him, you know, when he was playing. Um, the Melbourne Storm do a whole lot of this sort of stuff. They do these induction programs with new players coming into the club, where they send them out in the workforce and early in their pre-season campaigns, they put blokes out at work, and then you come to training after you've worked. So get up in the morning, go to work. Now, I don't know where the Players Association the AFL would allow you to do this sort of stuff, but do you see the merit, and this is to both of you blokes, do you see the merit in this, what the Storm do and having players go out, you know, at late at night, early in the morning to help organisations like the Selvos do this sort of stuff? How, how important is it for players to get a taste for that side of life? Probably always been of the view that I thought the draft could go back a year so you could actually... You know, the 18-year-old finishes school, goes to work, le- learns mm. how to live. You know, f- find some social skills and life skills and and time management, and then come to come to footy with a perspective. I, I think that's that's something that some players, 17, 18 year olds miss. Um, beneficial. I, I, the, I had some time with the Storm to see their program, and um, it's amazing. Everything just gets put back because you work during the day and then you train at night. That's right. Yeah. The old VFL model. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing guys appreciate the work they do during the day. Funny, I, I've struggled a little bit with the work program because everybody was on the tools, um, regardless of your, your background. And <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, could, right. you could be studying law, but you, you <laughs> going on the tools. So there's a little bit of perspective on that. So, I, yep. But um, I think, in, in essence, any, any way that you can give um, – Players education around some if you're not playing real life, real, yeah, yeah, real life yeah, because yeah. because as you know, Josh, this, yeah. the footy can finish quickly. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and then what do you got next? Mm. What's next in life? So yeah. I know we try to educate our players all the time about being good, you know, players and yeah. and, and professionals. But there's actually life after footy. Mm. Um, your thoughts on it, mate? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I was I was lucky in a sense because I didn't get drafted till I was 21 or two. Failed at basketball, worked at you know, sports power and. Bow repairs, fitting tires, yeah. I, and that that I still think back to those moments. Think, I'm pretty lucky, even right now, to do what I do versus you know standing under a car fitting tires at six foot six. It's not very easy. <laughs> so I agree. Well, I want to ask you: every single person in footy I've heard says the draft age should go back. Why doesn't it go back? <laughs> oh, this. Yeah, that's, have we got enough time? I yep. pay for two two hours of parking. <laughs> no, for this no, one. no, we'll give you a couple of minutes for this one. I reckon both of you. I, yeah. I have heard heard differing views on this. Um, I think ultimately, yeah, you, know, you talk about the Nick Dacos of the world may be waiting for a year. Well, that's a waste of a year that he's yeah, ready to play. Yeah, you know? yeah. um, but for every one of those, I think there's probably another story. I think schooling's definitely a, a, an issue. I think um, in terms of, well, I, I think that they they play a lot of school footy and, yeah. they, and then they have to do their, their degree, uh, sorry, their, their studies, and then they get out of that and then the draft. So there's a big year for it. So I think there's enough reasons for it not to. Yeah. Or to be extended another year. Um, I'm not too sure exactly. We're not terrified about losing talent. We're not losing terrified of losing the talent to other sports, are we? Like if nah, you, if, 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 if the AFL, if footy makes young men and women, you know, uh, 19 before they can get at it, whereas other sports allow them to play at 18, uh, might they opt? You know, then there's so many. I mean, I don't know how many blokes on both of your lists you've got who were outstandingly gifted at multiple sports coming through. I wonder whether that might be a fear 
that some games have got. Don't make them wait because if you make them wait another year, they'll choose. They might choose another sport. Yeah, uh, maybe it's a little bit of the pathway too, whether it's the VFL or the under 18s uh, where they go. Yeah, or yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's probably what they do, and you'd have to put a whole program in place for all of them to be actual. To, you know, the idea would be for them to get some, you know, life skills and, and to wait a little bit. Well, you need to know they're actually getting that, don't yeah, you? Because yeah. I, I mean, I, and this is not 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 to have a crack at those who play in it, what is it APS the yeah the, the private school I, stuff. I th- yeah. Some of those some of those guys who come through now, there's heaps who are outstanding. Some of those guys who come through, I thought had the least amount of resilience because then, oh. everything. Everything, I agree everything had yeah. been done, and you yeah. know that had every possible opportunity. When they come in, and no, you're not in the side, or you you didn't do that right. So, oh, well, hang on, I've never heard that before. Where mm. there's the guys who had been, you know, really ha- you know, travelled two hours to and from training, and and done it the hard way. Not all, not not exclusively, but a lot of those kids were the ones who had really great levels of resilience. Mm. Mm. It makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. All that sort of stuff. Yeah, I agree. A kid called Jack Ginevan, you may know him. Uh, he plays for your footy team uh, after the Adelaide game. Again, whether he wants to be the focal point of this or not, he is this week, and the AFL's doubled down on his pre-season, pre-season kind of edict on how he, how they want you know the the duckers and the droppers and the shruggers how they want those on. So the AFL's doubled down again this week. We're all on high alert now to see what round nineteen looks like, and it's. The point, and I've made this point for weeks, and I'll make it again. This is not just about your bloke. There are. You just said it was. No, no, well, <laughs> no. It's become he's become oh, okay. the lightning rod for it. There are players at the club I barrack for do it. There's players all over the league who do it. Yeah. Do you do you need to say something to him this week? Do you need to, or is he intuitive enough to know? Right, I know what's I know what's coming. No, I don't think. Uh, look, I, in terms of exactly the specifics of talking to him, now we speak to the whole group. Of course, yeah. You know, the, the, the rules have been reinforced, if you like. They yep. haven't changed. They no, just, no, that's right. Just reminding, because they actually come out in bold print, like yeah. bold letters. <laughs> yep. yeah. But um, no, this is something that we've been working through all year. Like we want to take on the tackle and taking on the tackle could be, as some have done, is dropping the knees yep. or driving your shoulder and whatever. But clearly the, the rules around it are, are being um, tightened, if you like, or the, the pencil's been sharpened. But taking on the tackle, I think this, you know, I said, actually one thing I did say to Jack this week is, is that I thought he left a few out there on the table in the last couple of rounds around getting – he's got great hands yeah. and to be able to you know set others up to set, to kick yeah. goals. And there's a couple of opportunities. I just showed him you know, some footage around what they could look like. Yeah. Um, but in terms of you know, interpretation, I think that's a collective more than one person. Yeah. Are you worried about um, – not – well, you're worried about – you're worried about all your players, but are you worried about some players uh, maybe putting themselves in – potential areas where they can be hurt. Is this something that you ever, ever worry about? I did hear a little bit of that dialogue um, around this this conversation around that. I, I actually think this, and we had an umpire at training, Alex came to training yesterday, he's been the regular, we have him once a week, twice a week sometimes. Um, and, you know, I think this this helps the umpire. Like, this yeah, is such yeah, a... Yeah, I agree. Oh, yep. Like, I saw the the, um, the picket one in, in up in Alice when... From one angle, it looks like it's clearly a high tackle. The other angle, oh, he's he shrugged the shoulder. Yep. How do you interpret that? It mm. just depends on where you're standing. So yep. what a what a difficult game. Alex was saying to us yesterday, the umpire, around um, the language or the way that they, they're spoken about it themselves this week, was that the ball, um, the guy that's trying to win the ball, pick the ball up off the ground, they'll still protect the yep. guy. So they're talking about the ball. How would you describe the ball? Not the ball carrier. The um, the ball winner. Ball, the winner, ball winner. Yeah. Yep, so they're yep. going to protect it. But the ball carrier, who's got a bit more time and yes, space, yeah. if you then start to do A, B, C, or D, then you may be seen to be. So there's still that protection element to it. So when you hear that, does that make sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it should make sense to players, right? The way he, um, yep. he described it, I thought, oh, that that makes a lot of sense yeah, to me. Yeah. You try to you put your head over the ball. You try to win it. You you get tackled high or you lead into it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, of, of course, the game's more in between that. It's such a difficult game to adjudicate. I think anything that we can assist the umpires, I think, if anything, we're trying to protect the umpires. Yeah. Talk about protecting the players. I, I think this this can ideally do the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the same. You're oh, the... Yeah, I agree. I think that, that's the key. The difference is at protecting the ball winner, the person who's trying to win the ball, versus the ball carrier, as you're saying. You know, I saw... I saw the email come through from. I didn't. Um, I didn't necessarily read it, which I probably oh, should. Some professional. Well, yeah, I, yeah, we're, we're worrying about up here. Okay, right, the, the no, it's not enough. down that's there fetching yeah, the ball. Fair but enough. Good there's point. a difference. There's a distinction 
that I think is easy to make versus seeking contact versus the contact you're getting when you're trying to acquire the ball. If you if you if you've acquired the ball and then you're seeking it with your shoulders or your head or your body height, that's yep. completely different. Yeah, we'll still the umpires will still get a few wrong, just like. Some of your players will miss goals yeah. from 25 out directly in front of them. Yeah. It's just yep. going to happen. And yep. I think that's where I'd, I'd, I'd look to say we don't look for blame or excuse because reality is, it, whether it's this rule or a you know, ruck infringement yep. or – the umpires are not going to be perfect. And, yep. and sorry, anyone out there that think it's going to be the case, it's just not real. Yep. So we just you know, deal, you know, need to play the game to, to the minutes and understanding that. Is Collingwood a little more, you know, I'm, I'm sure you went into the job uh, eyes wide open. Has the noise around just the club in general, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, is, <laughs> is it even more than you could have imagined? Uh, no, not really. No, I, I, I've sort of been around footy long enough. But I, I've been fascinated, to be honest, and coming to terms with the maybe the, the late night talk that becomes a, a, a doorstop. Yeah. Like, that, that's something <laughs> that I'm probably coming to terms yeah. with. You know, yeah, and maybe growing, uh, playing footy in Brisbane, you don't really get the yeah, noise of yep. that. But, um, yeah, whether that's just something to come to terms with, I, I just embrace it. You're too it accessible yeah, yeah, yeah. at yeah. Olympic Park. Yeah, well, it's too to, easy for the can't hide there. Can you <laughs> yeah. spoke about this in the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think I've, I'm coming up to my 50th doorstop, so <laughs> right. the, the <laughs> leper's making it better. But do you, do you, do you <laughs> not, have you noticed that, have you noticed that, that since you've, you know, been coaching this year, but even over the past three or four years, that, that you know, what we'd, Used to term sort of scuttlebutt was is it now can become a story. I think that's probably the power of social media. Like I remember when I was in Adelaide, Don Pike and I had to had to. We eventually, it got to the point there was a story that he and I had a fist fight, <laughs> and eventually it got to the point, and there was so much noise that we we better say something. But you, you're just like I don't want to acknowledge. I don't want to acknowledge. But eventually, you have to. If not necessarily the same example, but yeah. it's that loud that sometimes you have to speak about on things that you don't want to talk about. Yeah, and I do remember that. I, I heard you at that time talk about those things. Yeah, again, it's the, yeah, maybe the rumours or innuendo or a comment made here, an opinion there, that becomes potentially fact. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's yeah. I think that's the world we're living in. Um, yeah. Whether you turn the noise down, and I can, I've turned most of the socials off, so I don't hear a lot of the stuff that goes on, but, but I think protecting our players, um, funnily enough, you know, your players get in the four walls. They don't really. Nah, yeah, yeah. You know that, Josh. Yeah. They, they just get to work and don't really hear too much of it. Yeah, yeah. You said you had a hard hitting question. Well, I do. You spoke about your socials. Now, <laughs> with, uh, there's been a little bit of correspondence off the temper text, but the you're in a position of power along, you know, one of the, the, the most sought after positions in uh, Australian sport. And your Twitter handle is at flybags, <laughs> flybags four. Now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you might. Be, been, Daisy and I've been too scared to ask him this. Yeah, we might. Yeah, well, yeah, I, yeah. I don't have to yeah, come I'm back next Thursday. Like, can right. you change it? I don't even know. You can that. definitely change can it. You? you might lose your blue tick. Oh, your your, yeah. your I, I, coveted blue tick. Look, I don't go to sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's officially you. Well, I, the story goes that when I first started at Collingwood. Back in 2011, we went to Arizona, and I literally started a week. and And the club came to me and said, "Oh, look, we'd, we'd like you to, to, you know, get involved in mm. you know, social media or something." And I said, "Oh, okay, no worries." And Mick Maltas gave me the nick, nickname Flybags, so I thought, "Oh, <laughs> Flybags for it because no one else has got it." It sounds like a, a great, great handle. I didn't even know what this meant, um, but I did it, and then Collingwood retweeted it out and all of a sudden I've got 3,000 followers <laughs> as, as flybags fall. I go, oh, okay. And I don't do anything. I don't even know what to do with it. Um, but I haven't had the, the courage or the, the understanding or education that I had to change it. So, um, I'm sure someone at the footy club can help you. Well, no, I, I uh, stick with it. Yeah, yeah no, it's stick good. with it. Well, I, as long as you're comfortable with it. Well, Josh, I, to, right to this day, I've been coached all of 17, 18 games. I don't want to change as a person. Yes. So no, well, be true to your Twitter handle. Where did flybags come from? Uh, well, Mick, my, I had a nickname Fly for a long time, and then for some, some reason I was walking past Mick in the hallway, and he goes, yeah. Flybags. And I go, just stuck. And I just looked at him going, I, I don't even know what that means. The bags. Yeah, and then and then a few people got hold of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's not really my nickname, but it's it's definitely my Twitter handle. Your Twitter handle. handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, big one this week. Uh, the Bombers, who just happened to be playing their best footy of by the, the season. By the way, that was a great story, wasn't it? That was a really great story. It was a great story. <laughs> no, I loved it. That's a great story. <laughs> were, were we live then? <laughs> yes, we were. Yeah, okay. As we often are on this it's show, we ask, that question, we ask that we'll question. We'll get him on TikTok soon. Of ourselves. No, we won't. I don't, you're, not gonna, you're not on TikTok, are you? No. No, you won't be doing silly Some dances. unbelievable content. Uh, the Bombers are going all right at the moment. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. They're... Um, yeah, there's no easy game. There's like, no easy game. Yeah, like you know, you said a few uh, weeks. It's not who, it's when. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, and like, 
we, we went to Adelaide on the weekend with Adelaide their backs to the wall. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. The week before, you know, North were backs to the wall and you're playing away and you get certain players out and someone gets COVID. There's just always something that yeah. just always keeps the games on edge for us. And yeah, we've, we've got an average winning margin of about four points, so there's no easy game for us. <laughs> did you go under the hypnotist either, by the way? Did you, did you participate in that? No, I, I was part of the initiation where we had about 100 people in the room and and um, everyone, close your eyes and do this certain thing. I kept my eyes wide open. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I did not want to be part of that. <laughs> hey, good luck for the weekend. Thanks for coming in again.